today I'm hopefully going to be able to give you a different perspective on digital transformation. A little bit of my background is not only am I a provider, but I'm also a user of the, of the services and I've been a serial entrepreneur. So today I want to basically bring you through a bit of a 25 year journey, hopefully very fast, on some of the benefits and capabilities and services that we've been able to deliver. The Philippines. Unabashedly, I'd like to promote the Philippines and our capability. 25 years ago, we had the benefit of starting a small business and growing it from the Philippines because of the capability. All of you may have had, in some shape or fashion, touched Philippine capability in U.S. hospitals, in international hospitals. Their capability is world-renowned. From a historic point of view, we've been in the back office data IT business for 25 years. What I'm here to try to explain is that we've got 7,600 plus islands of capability. Over the years, the Philippines has grown a business that's just under $30 billion providing back office and services and IT to the world. A subset of that has been health care related health information services. That's what I'd like to dive into today. But I want to be able to promote you know, the, the Philippine capability. A lot of other countries have some fantastic services. I just want to lead you to where you'll get the best resources and the best experience. Transformation needs partners. And partners, you need to have trust, data-driven decisions, and insight. That's what I'd like to be able to start this presentation with. And when I end up, I hopefully be able to describe what we've been able to deliver for customers, but what the large majority of providers in the Philippines provide for the international community. Why the Philippines? Through the years, it's grown as a healthcare uh, provider, primarily because we delivered a lot, of, a lot of nurses and educated a lot of nurses, and frankly, they got on planes and traveled to the world. Welcome. Uh, the BPO industry, I've, I've been part of it for 25 years and have had the benefit of seeing where we were 25 years ago, the Philippines provided primarily medical transcription and medical coding. From those beginnings of probably about $150 million, $200 million in turnover, the country, with the support of the Philippine government and the National Association Health Information, uh, grew a business that's now just under $3 billion. All of, the, all of the crosses are there. A lot of the major providers are there. Again, I might not be telling you something you don't know, but in the digital transformation journey, it's all about the partnership. It's about who you're going on the journey with, who is the trusted partnership, who has a history of de delivering data-driven insight. The Philippines has that capability. So I'd really like to hone in on that, but now we're gonna go to digital transformation. About 100, this might be a little bit out of date, so I'd say we're probably already at about 160, 155, 160,000 uh, full-time equivalent supporting the health-related services in the Philippines. Again, just under $3 billion, full cycle, revenue cycle management, claims management, clinical, and pharmacy, in addition to a plethora of other services related to IT. All things in digital transformation today are being powered by IT and the support services that have to go hand in hand with that. Again, the Philippines has grown a very strong backbone of that. Now, we've all lived through a very challenging time. Uh, in my introduction, uh, it says I'm an entrepreneur and running a business, but I also spend a fair amount of time at the UN. And SDG3 represents better health uh, systems for the world. Disruption, the pandemic was a great disruption. Uh, you're seeing technology disruption all over. Right now we're having other conflict disruption around the world. How do we manage it? How do we become a better, more integrated health providers in the system? We all know where we came from, the traditional system. With COVID, everything sped up. What was in process for the last 10 years absolutely galloped ahead uh, you know, 10 years got collapsed into two years. 
what we need to now do is fully understand the road to true integration, which is going to include all the different various pieces of technology, all of the capability. But with that, it's about who do you trust on that journey with you on that relationship. Given 25 years of this journey, I can tell you it still comes down to people. It comes down to trust. It comes down to relationship because change is going to happen. The reality is technologies are going to change. God knows I hear compliance and regulatory drivers change. Government's ideas of how they're going to manage programs and benefits change. But what doesn't is the trust that you build with your IT, your providers, your solutions to evolve to that. And that's one of the things that I'd like to just be able to highlight. And from that, we were able to grow a business, just maybe steal a little bit. This isn't a commercial. From two people in 1996 to 4,700 folks uh, now in 19 countries. So I can tell you, and that is all driven by Filipino management and Filipino capability. Trends and opportunities. With all the different challenges that we have, we understand this last two years with COVID has unbelievably stressed the system, but it's also that di disruption has opened up telehealth. It's opened up so many possibilities that we're sort of dragging along with acceptance was really not taking, you know, was just taking too long. We see other disruptions and other possibilities coming down the road, whether that is pandemic, pandemic driven, financially driven, regulatory driven. How are we going to manage it together? This is, these are the various challenges that you face today with the, very, the patients wanting more engagement, more capability delivered through either Internet of Things or home health services that are replicating what they would get in the hospital. How are we going to do that? We have to figure out a joint journey on that path. This particular slide, frankly, has more things that we could talk about for days and days regarding policy, administration, and innovation. I broadly just wanted to touch on this because the sheer size of this undertaking requires all of us to map out a way that we can work together and find how we can get the best and leverage the best capabilities around the globe to deliver better health results. Some of the challenges that I'm sure all of you ex have experienced is the organizational readiness, the drain in the labor pool, I don't know what they're, they're calling it now, the great resignation, or just frankly, you can't find the right people at the right price. That's a challenge. And we need to leverage technology. Work from home has become more the norm uh, and may never reverse itself fully back to, some old, to the previous model. What are we gonna do? How do we build trust and confidence when we have more cyber security issues than you can shake a stick at? And you're gonna also have more regulation that drives how do we handle patient data as it crosses borders? The same thing has happened in the financial industry. We're, we're, we cover several different industries. So I'm sure health right now is getting a lot of attention, a lot of IT capability, but it's going to come down into trust and confidence. Digital and data infrastructure. As we are able to support that more and more, how is that going to be integrated in your delivery service model? Transformational opportunities, all the providers. You, as you go around, there's not a person here that's not talking about AI or RPA. Now take a step back and say, but what does that really mean for today? What is it really, what is it, what is it doing for their solution? How are they, what is their roadmap to really implement it? There's a difference between a brochure and the reality of implementing. Now this is me as, as a person who uses the services. The reality is you need to be on a journey with a partner, whatever the partner, as long as it comes from the Philippines, they are the ones that need to help you hand in hand evolve those technological and digital transformation. That's the real story. There is no flip of the switch or a silver bullet. And anyone, I, I love platforms, we have some ourselves, but the reality is the platform is just a way to engage a trusted relationship and a partnership to deliver services. Influence shareholding mindset. I can't say enough about this because again, we've, you can have the greatest ideas in your own organization, but you might not have uptake. So you need to have a capability to sell what you can do today and get wins that are demonstrable internally and externally so that you can adopt more change. 
that is the reality. And what I'm trying to say is out of 25 years of doing digital transformation for uh, Fortune 1000s around the globe, making sure that you can get wins, immediate wins that allow you to then continue to sell that opportunity inside is absolutely important. Now, I hopefully have tried to explain the upside of the Philippines, the upside of digital transformation. But now let's talk about the reality of risk management. What are their transitional risks? Technology, third parties, continuity, operations, cyber, data privacy, regulatory. All of these things, frankly, are can be minefield laden. And they're all deals, they're all deal killers in regard to moving a digital transformation forward. Again, working with partners that have had long-term track records of mapping these things out and managing to work through each hurdle is key. This isn't something you wanna go with somebody that's first to the party. This is something that you wanna, as a long-term process where you're at least dealing with people who have been at it for five or 10 years. Again, we have a lot of those providers over in the Philippine booth, but whatever you do, whoever you do it with, these are the hurdles that you absolutely have to spend more time on up front to cause a success down the road. Transitioning and mitigation strategies, more on just how are you going to do it? How do you actually provide solutions and measurable scorecards on that journey? Everybody will come up with some flash scorecards. I would ask you, who are the people that are driving it? Because that's what matters. You know, it's data points are wonderful, but if it doesn't drive insight and better results, the question is, what are you doing it for? So some of these are just the different strategies on which how to put in that digital strategy. Unabashedly, I have to throw in a commercial here. We've been doing healthcare, health services uh, for, uh, the for primarily the United States and some in Europe. Again, some of the different revenue cycle management, payer, happy to speak to anybody. There's only two booths that I want you to go to after this. One is the Philippines and the other is ADEC. What's the number of ADEC? Where's Anthony? What's the number of our booth? Uh, 1737. 1737. All right, I'm done with my commercial, but make sure you go to the Philippines. I'd like to wrap up a bit with, at the end of the day, if anything that you've come across, maybe I'm a little bit been doing this too long, make sure that you're working with a partner that can provide you the trust, data-driven decisions, and insight to allow you the security to execute your data transformation. Without this, it's a, it's a lovely sell, it's a lovely brochure, but more importantly is the partnership, the relationship, the execution relies on these three points. Now, how we got here, 1996, me and my partner founded a small business in the Philippines. From those humble beginnings, we now have one or two offices around the world and about 4,800 folks. I cannot tell you enough, we would not be standing here today without Philippine capability delivered in a world-class way to the markets. Now, healthcare is just a portion of this. It's about 8% of our entire, uh, about 400 folks around the world are health-related. We provide services to countries, NGOs, um, uh, enterprises. A lot of the things that might touch your life in some shape or fashion, we provide systems to. So digital transformation to us in various industries has been sort of a journey that we've been on. And again, it was about the partnership. It was about the relationship. It's about the capability to deliver through good times and bad times. And when change happens, the first person that you call is your partner and they're able to adapt rapidly. Because if you can't deliver at scale, delivering services at scale, it's never gonna provide any meaningful impact. And that's what I'd like to be able to deliver. We were able to build a business on it. Again, this is not a commercial. I'm a, I am not only provide for third party, but I also use our own services to build this business. And that's, that's why we were asked to talk as far as a case study of what is possible. 7,600 islands, of possibility and capability. That's what you find in the Philippines. You know, I'm, I'm damn proud of coming from the Philippines and growing a business there. Yes, we are a company, 
Uh, we are a commercially driven company. We do services and provide uh, IT solutions for somebody's problem. We generally fall under business assurance. Again, this isn't a commercial, but for 25 years, we've been helping with digital transformation. Today, they, they have nicer words, platforms, enterprise, but actually the journey has been the same thing. There's a problem, a client needs a solution, and that trusted partnership evolves into a long-term relationship. But I wanna highlight, because a large part of the people here either, either already are outsourcing, they may not realize, realize the capability the Philippines has to offer, or they haven't had exposure to that. And they're about to maybe look at what would they need to do to scale? Can they get enough nurses? Do we need clinical bedside nursing in the US doing administrative work rather than patient facing work. And the reality is we may not be able to find enough nurses here. So the Philippines can not only augment staff, but it can help in that journey. And again, I've seen it up close from maybe $200 million 20 years ago, 25 years ago to just about $3 billion. That's not just coming, that's not coming all through us, of course, but a lot of the main providers have already enjoyed Philippine capability and if any of you are thinking about outsourcing, you should do it in the Philippines. Primarily, the Philippines is very strong in English. They do service multiple uh, languages, but as a user, I would tell you that's not necessarily its strength. Now, you know, would I go for needing 500 people with Spanish in the Philippines today? No. If you needed 50, yes. So it's just, it's a matter of scale. When me and my partner first started out, we, uh, we, we packed our bags and we went to India. God bless, fantastic places, outstanding providers. And when you're looking for certain capability, now this was 25 years ago when to be frank, India was the top on the block and the Philippines was not really on the map as far as other outsourcing services. We at that time decided to say we wanted to make a difference because Philippine capability, uh, customer facing skill set, English skill set exceeded what we could find in the in India. Now, that was our experience. We've grown out. Uh, I know that there's plenty of great capability and great providers there, but health related and call center, the Philippines is number one in the world for call center and specialized entities like health, it's absolutely you know a growing business. So again, this isn't Philippines versus India, I'm just saying our experience as Philippines made the difference in our business. So again, I had to get out my government plugs because without the Philippine government and the Health Information uh, Association, the industry would probably be still a couple hundred million. With their help, they put a roadmap and then the private sector took that opportunity and frankly, the clients saw value. Forget about me. The clients, your end customers, will see value in, in Philippine capability. That's what we saw as a business. For us, again, I can speak for us. Uh, let me speak for us first. We deal with member states, NGOs, and uh, enterprises all over the world. In some shape or fashion, we touch your life and you wouldn't know it. About 30% of the clothes in your closet, we manage the database for all the dyes for the big apparel companies. Again, we do a lot with the UN. For us, a lot of work gets done in the Philippines that you wouldn't recognize that's supported by multinationals or the IT capability. Uh, that, that's our journey. The people that have used the health industry are from the big blues all the way down to startups. Uh, Silicon Valley startups that need five guys and they quickly need to have X amount of IT resources, they use the Philippines. So there are vendors that specialize in different sizes. I apologize, I won't get the number right, but I think Accenture has, how many people? Uh, last time I knew it was like maybe 18, 23,000 people in the Philippines. Right? And I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've under <laughs> cut that number. They'll probably yell at me later. But so the sheer scale of what really happens in the Philippines, you don't realize. A lot of the services and capabilities, it isn't just call centers, it's engineering, it's gaming, it's IT services. The, the, the list kind of goes down. So it's not just health. If you're going to manage health, the real reality is 
You're going to need IT support services. You're going to need pro business process. You're going to need people who can map out and understand the health journey. So doctors, nurses, business process, and business process engineers. They exist in the Philippines. I'm not sure you can put a price on the value you get from the Philippines. Uh, I, I, have, I have to be, come to the Philippine booth, talk to all the vendors, understand because what are you asking? You know, is it professional IT? I mean, they, it goes the whole journey. Yes, outsourcing is about value pricing. Let's be frank, right? It's about leveraging resources at a value price. I'm trying to tell you there's so much more value. After you get that basic business model down, the extra value is the long-term partnership, the trust, the data, the insight that brings you on the journey. Uh, and the, your question is, do we use our own and other platforms? The answer is yes and yes. We've had to develop our own platforms for a lot of the different things we do and a lot of the engagement models, but frankly, you're not gonna beat an Epic or a Cerner or things like that. Reality is we, pl we, plug, into the, we plug into the big boys, but for IT capability, yes, we do have that. Well, thank you so much uh, for that wonderful presentation. I think uh, you've uh, stimulated a lot of interest in, uh, in the Philippines and uh, we're hoping to see you all.